Hello, Terry Soul of Programming Chaos here. In today's video, I'm going to use our particle system that was developed in previous videos to create a sort of Christmas tree pattern. A couple of comments about this before we get started. First, as you can see, we have lots of different patterns that are possible. And I'm going to set up the program so that we can explore them. As you can see, by moving the mouse around, we'll use different, we'll change the parameters, and then we'll get different patterns out of this. If you find any interesting patterns that you particularly like, please feel free to share them in the comments down below. And as I said before, we're going to be using the particle system that was presented in previous videos. So if you're not familiar with that, you may want to go watch the particle system video. What I'm starting with here, this is just a demo. The actual code that I have on the right does not do the trees yet. This is just our particle system for generating and drawing random particles. So there you can see a screen full of random particles. And if we look at the class, the code sort of presents that. So each particle has a position, it has a color, we pick random positions and we give them actually a random hue. This is using the hue saturation brightness setting for the colors. We can update the particles, but it doesn't do anything. And then we can display the particles and that just draws them. And so if we go to the main code, we create an array of particles. This is, as I said, where we set the color mode. And then this is our loop for generating the new particles. I don't want a stroke, so I'm setting this to be no stroke, so there's no outline on the particles. This is the main draw loop where, as usual, we're updating the particles, which, as I've said, does nothing. And then we're displaying them, and so we get a bunch of random particles on the screen. So what I want to do is modify this to get our nice tree-like structure. And I'm going to do that by using the idea of a Lissajou figure. So this basically uses a combination of sines and cosines to move the particles around. So a cosine to go back and forth and a sine to go up and down. And when you combine those, you get sort of a nice pattern of motion. And then to make it tree shaped, I'm going to do something a little bit unusual, but that works well, which is simply to say, instead of the normal back and forth and up and down and what amounts to a rectangle, I'm going to squeeze the top of that to get a triangle out of it. So let's take a look at how that works. So the first thing that I need to do is set the starting position of the particles in the constructor, because right now that's just random. And then I also need to create an update so that they move along these patterns. And those are basically going to both be done together. Because the particles move according to sines and cosines, we basically need to know what angle is each particle at. So I'm going to have a whole bunch of particles, of course, and they're going to be at different positions along that curve. So each particle will have its own angle to say how far along it is in the curve. So I need to add that to the class. Each particle has its own angle. And then the initial particles I want to set sort of all along that curve based on their angle. And so the angle part, works like this. I take 2 pi, which is going to be sort of throughout the whole pattern, right? 2 pi is the repeating speed for the pattern. Divide that by the swarm size and then multiply it by the index of the particle. So particle 0 is at angle 0. Particle 1 is just a teeny bit beyond that because the swarm size that I'm using is 20,000. I have a lot of particles there. So each particle is just going to be a little bit further along this curve. And then I'm going to give them their position based on that angle. So y is going to be based on the height. So y, we start at the middle of the screen, and then we add to that an amplitude, which is 40% of the screen in each direction. So basically, it'll fill 80% of the screen, which works pretty well. And then I'll use the sine of the angle, and so they'll be displayed along sort of a sine wave. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the x values. Except that here I'm using the width. And so if we run this, what we end up with is particles in a circle. 
actually an ellipse because the width of the screen is a little narrower than the height, but basically they're all lined up in a circle. And so not very exciting yet, but that's sort of a start. So to make this more of a tree shape, I have to squeeze the top together. So instead of making the amplitude of the cosine depend on the overall width, I'm gonna have it depend on the Y value. Particles near the top should have a smaller amplitude. So I take the Y value, I'm subtracting off a tenth of the height because that's this one tenth of the height. So this Y value, the amplitude will effectively be zero, giving me a nice point at the top. There we go. So it ends up being sort of a teardrop shape. So the next thing that I wanna do is go from this teardrop shape to have more of a back and forth and an up and down. And to do that, to get the back and forth, what I wanna do is increase the frequency of the cosine wave. And so I'm gonna do that by quite a bit. I'll put in a 61 here. And so now in addition to going up and down, it goes back and forth 61 times for every sine oscillation up and down, we have 61 cosines back and forth. And so we get this pattern starting to look tree-shaped, although we don't have the cool motion going on. This at least gets us in the right direction. And in fact, to get a good pattern, I'm gonna do the same sort of thing with the sine wave. So there we go. Now we have a grid that we can start to work with. And there's some things that we wanna modify from here. I wanna put in an update so that we update the positions of the particle. I also wanna change the random colors because that gets to be a bit garish. In the update, what we need to do is update the angle and then adjust the width and the height so I can just reuse some of this code. So I'm gonna to add to the angle just again, a very small factor. So basically each particle is moving along that curve very slowly. How fast I want it to move, I really need a, to put in a parameter here so that I can adjust that speed. And I'll put in a speed of 2.0 and you can adjust that in part depending on your computer speed. So the other thing I wanna do is adjust the color and I wanna do two things there. I wanna start with a more uniform set of colors. So the idea is gonna be all of the particles are gonna be a similar but not identical color. So they're gonna be picked randomly but from a much smaller range. And then as part of the update, I also wanna change the colors to have them gradually move through the whole spectrum. So I think that gives a nice effect. You can, again, play with different ways of handling the color. So we start with a random color from just part of the whole spectrum of hues, and then we update it. So what I'm doing here is pulling the hue out of the color. So the color itself, C, consists of three values, hue, saturation, and brightness. I'm pulling out the hue, adding one to it, so increasing the hue by a little bit, then doing a modulus 360 because my color wheel goes around 360 degrees. And then I'm using a saturation and brightness again of 100, things that you could experiment with, and then rebuilding the color object. And so if we run this, you can see all of the particles are in a particular range. They started yellow-orange, but now as we update, we're moving through the color wheel. And so we get mostly green colors and then we get mostly blue colors. Now we get some blue-green, eventually it'll move into purples and reds and so forth. So it's slowly moving through the color wheel based on this update here, but we had some random variation initially to give sort of a more interesting pattern. Okay, so now we basically have all of our particles in our tree and they're very slowly moving and at the same time, they're changing color. So we get this kind of nice pattern. I wanna now take it a little further than that. And the way that I'm gonna do it is by two things. One, not drawing all of the particles. So we'll only draw some of them so that we can see them move. And then two, we're gonna play with how much they are erased with each update of the background.
So the first thing that I'm gonna change, and it won't have much of impact yet, is instead of filling in the background entirely in black each time, I'm gonna redraw the background just as a rectangle, but with a little bit of transparency. And so the way that that is done, I wanna fill using the color black, but I wanna use some transparency here. So we can begin by just setting a particular value of transparency. And then the other thing that I want to do is not display every single particle, but only some of them. So this is going to display every 100th particle. By itself, that's not super interesting, although you can see we get some nice color changes because as it goes through, it's only displaying some of the particles. And so when it changes colors dramatically, you have to wait a little bit to see those colors being updated. But what we can do that's a little fancier than that is to go in and say, well, instead of doing modulus by 100, let's do it based on the mouse position. And we have to be careful here. I don't want to divide by zero error. So I'm going to use the mouse position plus one. So at a minimum, I'm dividing by one, even if I put the mouse all the way to the left. And now I can go in and by sliding the mouse back and forth, I should be able to control how many of the particles are being displayed. However, you don't see this effect too much yet because doing nothing with the fill. I have to actually draw with that fill. There we go. So now I am filling in, but I'm filling in the whole rectangle of the screen. That was missing. Just filling alone was not going to do anything. So here we go. Now you can see that if I move the mouse way over to the right, I'm only drawing a few of the particles out of our 200,000. And as I move the mouse to the right, I'm drawing more and more of the particles. And what's very interesting is that as you move back and forth, you get different patterns because of all of these moving particles, you might get every 50th or every 52nd or every 100th. And depending on which set you pick, you get very different patterns, which is, I think, very cool. And then the other thing that we can play with is how much transparency there is when we cover up the screen. And of course, right at the moment it's fixed. So let me come over here and do what I wanted, which is to say, I want the amount of transparency to depend on the Y position of the mouse. So I'm gonna use the X position to decide how many particles I show, and I'm gonna use the Y position to decide how much transparency I use and that will become a little clearer when I put it in. So I want my transparency to vary between zero and 100. That should be the range on the transparency. And I'm gonna use the mouse at, to decide that. So you can see as I move up, when it overwrites the screen, it's leaving the particles behind because it's basically adding sort of black, but mostly transparent black. And as I move the mouse down the screen, we get less and less transparency. So it does correctly, in a sense, erase the screen. And there you get totally different patterns in terms of how many particles are being drawn and where, how quickly they're being erased. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of variations that we can make to this program, basically by going through the code and taking a look at where I put in numbers that are not currently being changed. So a couple of examples of those, the speed, we can adjust the speed at which the particles change. Another one, we can adjust how much randomness there is in the initial colors. Other options, we can adjust the width excuse me, the width of the triangle, right? This is our cosine. This is what has us going back and forth. We can adjust the width by playing with that. We can adjust the height because that's the amplitude of the sine going up and down. We can adjust the frequency of both the sine and the cosine, which will either give us more back and forth motion or more up and down motion. 
all sorts of different variations that you can play with. I encourage you to try them out yourself, see if you can get different shapes, different patterns. If you see any that are particularly interesting, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll show them in a future video. Thank you.